My name's Michael Hoffman, and it's my great pleasure to present the results of the ProPSMA trial, a prospective randomized multicenter study of prostate-specific membrane antigen PSMA PET-CT imaging for staging high-risk prostate cancer prior to curative intent surgery or radiotherapy. I'm a nuclear medicine physician from the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia, and it's my pleasure to present the results on behalf of all co-investigators. Now, these are my disclosures. This was a non-commercial investigator-initiated trial supported by a clinical trials award from the Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia, funded by Movember. The findings have been published in The Lancet, and you can go to the link to read the findings in detail. And also, please download the supplementary appendix, which contains additional rich information. PSMA PET-CT has emerged as a potential new gold standard for imaging prostate cancer, producing images with striking tumour to background contrast. Here a man with Gleason grade group 4 prostate cancer and normal conventional imaging demonstrating numerous pelvic and abdominal subcentimetre nodes which are barely visible on CT but lighting up very brightly on PSMA PET-CT. In high-risk prostate cancer, relapse is common despite careful selection of men for curative intent surgery or radiotherapy. Defining the extent of disease is critical for decision making and we believe that more accurate imaging is likely to improve patient outcomes. PSMA PET-CT is a one-stop shop, single scan with widespread availability. However, despite promise, we lack prospective multi-center data and we hope this phase three trial will provide global impact. Uh, this was a collaboration of 10 sites around Australia, a close collaboration of nuclear medicine, urology, radiation oncology, and clinical trial staff supported by the ANZUP Cancer Trials Group, sponsored by the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre, and also in association with the Australasian Radiopharmaceutical Trials Network. A shout out to all our co-investigators. Patients were eligible if they had untreated, biopsy-proven prostate cancer and were being considered for curative intent treatment. They must have had high-risk disease, defined by a PSA of 20 or more a Gleason grade group 3 to 5 or clinical T stage of T3 or greater. We randomized 302 men to either CT and bone scan, and that was performed with SPECT-CT or a Gallium PSMA 11 PET-CT. Here are the baseline characteristics, which were similar between both arms. Men underwent second line crossover imaging and less more than three distant metastases were identified. Uh, men underwent repeat imaging selectively at the six month time point. We also determined the management plan prior to first line imaging, after second line imaging, and after uh, second line imaging. The reference standard was defined at six months using a predetermined scoring system as listed here. Heart criteria included positive histopathology or a change to a sclerotic lesion on CT. Soft criteria, more than three must have been met as listed here, defining a temporal change in imaging, biochemistry, or clinical status. Using these reference standard, 30% of men had nodal or distant metastases. Example of a man with a purported spinous process metastasis at baseline with no change on CT. Following treatment with ADT and repeat imaging, we can see that this lesion becomes sclerotic on CT uh, and disappears on PSMA PET CT, meeting a hard criteria and several cross soft criteria confirming this as a true positive lesion. The primary outcome was accuracy, defined by the area under the curve of the receiver operating characteristics, and this showed a 27% greater accuracy for PSMA PET CT than conventional imaging. That's an accuracy of 65% for the combined findings of CT and bone scan compared to 92% for PSMA, with non-overlapping confidence intervals. Superior accuracy of PSMA PET-CT was primarily due to higher sensitivity, but also occurred due to increased specificity. And this was true for both the pelvic, nodal, and distant metastatic subgroups, and also true in a sensitivity analysis if we considered equivocal lesions positive rather than negative. Here is a distribution of abnormal findings within bone on the left and within lymph node on the right. 
Here are our key secondary endpoints, which included management change, defined by a significant intermodality change of therapy, such as surgery to ADT, or change in radiation field. And this occurred in 28% of men randomized to PSMA PET-CT, compared to 15% of those having standard imaging. In those who crossed over to second line imaging, that management impact persisted with PSMA PET-CT at 27%. However, there was little value in having a CT bone scan following PSMA PET. Equivocal or uncertain findings were seen in 23% of men randomized to CT bone scan compared to only 7% of men randomized to PSMA PET. In those who crossed over to second line imaging, a correct change of stage according to the six month reference standard occurred in only 2% of men randomized at, who had CT bone scan compared to 19% with PSMA PET. The radiation dose was roughly half with PSMA PET and we saw high reporter agreement. The strengths of the pro-PSMA study are that it is the first multi-center randomized trial with a pragmatic design providing real world data and a direct comparison of PSMA PET CT compared to the current standard of care CT bone scan as a replacement or a second line test using a well-defined reference standard and six months follow up. In terms of weaknesses, it seems that our sensitivity is significantly overestimated, particularly in light of other trial results such as the Condor trial. And this is because not all our men underwent a pelvic lymph node dissection, so we were unable to define the true incidence of pelvic nodal disease. We're also unable to show that management change will improve downstream long-term outcomes, although we don't think this is an appropriate endpoint for this type of study. We believe that the study results indicate that pro-PSMA represents a new gold standard, but in order for that to occur, the test must also be available and cost-effective, which is yet to be shown. In summary, the pro-PSMA data supports PSMA PET-CT as a replacement to current standard of care CT and bone scan. I'd like to once again thank Movember, the Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia, and all our co-investigators at all the sites around Australia. Thank you.